When Randall Stevenson acquired uh, Time Warner, he said that HBO was, was really it's a crown jewel. Crown yeah. jewel. Right. Uh, it was something they wanted to build upon, it was something they wanted to use to compete against Netflix. And he, at the time, um, praised Richard Plepler in many, many ways. So what went wrong? I, I, I think he still, he still praises Richard Plepler. I don't think that, that respect has gone away by any means. This, from what we've gathered, is Richard's decision. He, he is leaving of his own accord because of the job is different. And when we say different, like it's become, HBO has been so much more brought into the fray within the whole Turner, Turner, which is TNT and TBS, the other networks that were under Time Warner. It used to be a very separate enterprise, right? right? They're going to collapse a lot of the back-end operations. And I think on the, on the top of it, the strategy is more out of his hands now. It's, it's false to John Stanky, who's the executive in charge of Warner Media. This is an eight, old AT&T executive. So when there's less strategy for you to work on, what do you do at that kind of company? But also speak to the news and the speculation around this idea that he was about to be layered, as they say in the business. Right. So they're, they're talking to Bob Greenblatt, who is a longtime NBC executive. He, he left some months ago, and this is a chance for him to, to come back. He could come in at this sort of higher level, right, where you'd have a Richard Plepper report into him. And you know that's that you know if you know Richard, that's not likely to happen. He's not the type of guy to report. Greenblatt's going to get going to have a lot more than just Plepler, right? He's they're consolidating a lot. They're consolidating he, a lot. He, before NBC, I think he's better known for uh, for before he was at Showtime. NBC. Yeah, right. he was at Showtime, which is a rival of HBO. Yeah. Uh, but the the idea is that if being layered means everyone gets demoted, one, right. right? And so who who wants to be in that kind of a situation? Uh, and it but it's more than just the who reports to whom. I think right. it's. There's less autonomy. There's less control over the thing that you're supposed to be controlling. So, look, does it suggest that HBO is going to become more mass market, less premium? So that's the fear, right? That AT&T comes in, the big phone company comes in, and they kind of widgetize, you know, the content, right? To a degree, that might that might be happening. I think they definitely need more volume, ultimately, not just out of HBO, but all the other properties that they're they're part of it, including Warner Brothers, uh, and they're finding they need to find a way to supercharge. They've got an OTT service. They've got a streaming service coming up uh, at the end of the year, early can next year. Can we just talk about this? So this is a, a true business model challenge slash question, right? right? You have HBO on one hand, and if you're trying to build something that looks like Netflix, does the can HBO look like Netflix? Can you, do the, can and, you still be HBO and compete right. with Netflix and do on right. the terms? And it sounds like John Stanky and Randall made a decision at some point along the line that actually the HBO brand was a premium brand. Yep. They wanted that, and we talked about it actually on stage with John Stanky, yes. and I think we actually covered it on, on CNBC at the time. Right. This idea of are, are, is HBO the puzzle, and everything else is a piece of that HBO puzzle, or is HBO just a small piece of a larger puzzle? So I think the way Randall sees it, I think the way that John Stanky sees it, HBO is still the centerpiece of this going forward plan to be a streaming service because it's the best brand. It's the best consumer facing brand. And that's something ATT understands, which is charging consumers directly every month. That they figure, oh, it's the same kind of idea, right? It's not quite, right? Because people buy into HBO. The, the sort of consumer backlash, uh, when we reported on the town hall meeting that ATT had with, with HBO when, it, when they closed the deal last June, Consumer backlash was really intense. They're like, don't mess with my HBO. And I think that sort of try, that's the thing they're still having to navigate, which is you want HTTP to be bigger and broader, but you ca it can't be so big and broad that like, it turns off the consumers that you're used to having. That said, uh, this stat grabbed me overnight. From 2013 to 2018, HBO's revenue increased 20%, which for a, a part of a legacy media company was very impressive. Netflix's went up 11 times over. Right. So, so that does suggest that for all the plaudits you went, you've won at HBO being some of the, the best shows that you've made there, that they could have made revenue growth much stronger. They could have, but then they're very different models, right? Like, it's hard to identify a Netflix show because they, the way they produce things, they're licensing things, but have different types of production companies in terms of the things they produce. HBO has a really specific model where a lot of things sort of, you know, they rely on the same creatives. And so you can identify an HBO show when you see it. And I think that's a big part of the you, brand you remember, and part of the appeal. We've had some experience with this. And that was GE with, remember when the bean counters GE came in came with GE, in NBC Universal. And suddenly it's like, can you show us what your return is going to be on this movie? And like the movie executives are like, what? And it, well, you know, it could be anywhere from minus a half a billion to plus a half a billion. We're not really sure. And GE was like, what? So I'm just wondering whether you get the same sort of reaction. Well, so to, now, now, do you look at AT&T as a big 
sugar daddy that has so much money that that they can do whatever they are they going to be you know watching every penny think and thinking about debt that they a you question. know AT&T's got a lot of debt. AT&T has 171 billion dollars of debt on the books. So do they not do the big block but do they not pay the Warner's not going to get more money than they have been for at least another year plus, right? So And that Randall was, a, that that was, that that was always the leverage. promise of the transaction though. It, but it's going to take a while. So at and is a balance sheet business, right? Their balance sheet is in a position where, where they can be a sugar daddy to, to Warner now. Right. And it's going to take at least a year before they can deleverage to the point where, uh, where an HBO can see the right. real benefits of that. Can I just go back to that HBO brand you, you mentioned? Because, yes, they make really quality shows, but it's cro they do documentaries, right. sport and politics. They do Game of Thrones and they do Entourage, which is a comedy. Does that really matter? It's just you've got to have good shows, and, and Netflix has good shows and less you good shows. And Entourage huge is library. on Netflix, so <laughs> just, yeah, that right. show couldn't be on now. Well, that, just, that was one yeah, big Me Too mess. Example. Like, example. You, you, you can't even watch reruns is, without getting. Got, they can still have that core identity that the fans love and the best shows, and just have lots of. So other the idea stuff is why well. you can't just have HBO, but more of HBO. Right. I think that's what Richard Plepper was, what was game with, to do. Absolutely. You know, the CNN thing is still fascinating too. Because now, and now we've got the latest data point is that they just kicked the Justice Department's ass uh, all well, over. Oh yeah, no, that, it, they they beat the government back, and that's they're but, not going to be But, but even if they wanted to change CNN, or, or, they really can't because they're still mad at Trump. I think for also for, there's a there's every indication that AT and T is not going to mess with CNN in terms of like the the editorial product necessarily. I think there's going to be more of a sort of consolidation on the on the from operational from end Texas. Things. They would love to mess with CNN with what the, the product that they're turning I, out would, right <laughs> now. <laughs> Maybe you know let, me ask you, let me ask you a separate question though, uh, just about the personnel at HBO. Right. And, uh, and I should I should say I worked with Richard. Um, you're you're tight friends he, with Richard. He, 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 he had made yeah. too big to fail. Um, they were a fabulous group of people to work with in truth. It, they were they really were. And and but my question is he had so many relationships with yes. so many people in New York and Los Angeles, the sort of influen the, the, the influencer group, if you will, and he was, a, as a result of these relationships, able to acquire lots of different content. People wanted to do business with him. Also, and how critical in this new age do you think that is? Because one of the things that the Netflix model did upend right. is there, there, you know, it used to be, a, there used to be a view that you needed to have this relationship and, and this, this network, and then all of a sudden it, it became clearer that if you had a checkbook, an app is proving this as well. Um, if you have the money, if they'll you have come, the, right? You, they may come as well. But so it's, where do you see the distinction I, there? I don't think it's simply a function of having the money, though, right? You're a great example, right? I think Richard Plepler, what he, one of the things he helped pioneer is finding people outside the box, right? Hey, let's turn that into, right. a, into a show or into documentary or a movie or a, and like those kinds of, because Richard really loves sort of the cognoscenti and like sort of he has these salons in his, in his uh, Apart, apartment uptown. I think he liked to convene creative types at all different levels and all different sort of areas, and that's what made HBO unique. And I think that we haven't seen. It's not just about handing out money. Right? Is there a I lot of demand a that. for him elsewhere? Well, that's a good question. I, he had the job he wanted, right? I think that job doesn't exist anymore. And you don't think it. that an Amazon or a Netflix or a Hulu would say, you know what? If I could pull Richard Plepler okay. in, I'll take him. I, because, because could he recreate that magic? Maybe not, look, he, he's not gonna take over Ted Sarandos' job, but maybe would you make him a vice chairman of the company, or the chairman of the company even? I think Netflix, I think the, I think that it's not, wouldn't happen in a place like Netflix. I mean, and Amazon or Hulu is an interesting idea. Uh, we had reported some months back that, uh, you know, CBS is looking for a new right. CEO, and when Dick Parsons was, interim chairman, he reached out to, to Plepper. Plepper said, no, nah, I don't want that job. That's not for me uh, either. I'm getting so. hammered with the, the, the creeping takeover of the Squawk Box by the New York Times. They're saying it's right now at 50, uh, at 50%, 50 percent. with you. What, is Krugman coming in? He can and, be, and we're right in Times Square. Right. He so can, I say it's we're at Squawk Square, and he is not out of the box. He's part of the box. Part of, but well, we, he's in the box. Well, we don't really know. It's called Squawk We don't box. really know. Sorry, we, sorry. we wonder. And